What's up guys, it's Andre from Jiu Jitsu Junction and in this video we will be talking about rib injuries in Jiu Jitsu. A little over a year ago I dislocated my rib. So I will be drawing from my personal experiences with a pretty significant rib injury as well as drawing from the experiences of coaches and other people around me who've dealt with rib injuries in the past. We'll break down common places where these injuries happen, cover what makes them so challenging to heal, go over some expected recovery timelines, and some actions that I took to make healing my rib injury go a little more smoothly. At the end of the video, we'll also talk about how to safely return to training jujitsu. So first, an obvious disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. If you have a real injury, then you should probably go see a medical professional. However, it's my hope that by sharing these experiences with you, that I can give you a little bit of perspective and help you to navigate your rib injury if you have one. First, let's talk about where these rib injuries tend to happen. Probably the most common way is getting stacked and having heavy pressure in that stacked position. Another common one is being overpowered in a twisting movement, which is how it happened for me. Ribs can also just pop under heavy pressure. This most commonly happens when there's a large size mismatch. And I kind of dismissed this as being a possibility until I personally got my rib hurt and my 80% rib health rib can really tell that it's possible to hurt your rib just from side control pressure. As far as how my rib injury actually occurred, all I was doing was trying to pass over somebody's guard and twist my hips into a large back step at the exact same time that they decided to wrestle up into me. So my core got overextended in a twist and because I didn't have enough tension in my core, I ended up popping my rib. This was really just a freak accident and I did learn a little bit about how to prevent that from happening. When it initially happened, all it sounded like was a knuckle popping, but on your rib where you should never hear that sound. By the time I picked up my kid one to two hours after that injury happened, I was having a lot of trouble getting in and out of the car. And that level of acute injury feeling lasted for several weeks. Rib injuries are notoriously difficult to heal because we can't brace them the way we could other injuries. Your ribs are constantly moving with you breathing in and out. And if you're here because you've injured your rib, you know that all kinds of different movements that seemed pretty innocuous and easy to do before that you didn't think possibly would involve your rib, they involve your rib. So your rib is kind of in active use all the time. So what this really means is that we just have a really long recovery time for a rib injury. The timeline for recovery varies a lot based on what kind of rib injury you have and at what severity. I'm going to give you some numbers here to kind of give you some perspective, but you have to take these numbers with a grain of salt. These are just numbers across a population and not all of those people do jujitsu. You have to keep in mind that you aren't actually recovered until you are actually recovered. And with this type of injury, it's going to self-regulate because it's a pretty uncomfortable type of injury. So let's get into some numbers. If you have a bruise or an intercostal muscle strain, the, the muscles in between your ribs, the recovery time can be anywhere from a few days to a few weeks. Another common type of rib injury is a fractured or a broken rib. Fractured and broken ribs take up to 12 weeks to get to a decent spot. And then the third kind of injury is the rib dislocation or separation. This is my type of injury. And it's really one of the more common serious rib injuries that occur in jujitsu. These types of injuries take between two and three months to get to some level of normalcy, but it can take significantly longer depending on how big the dislocation was. For me, it was probably closer to 10 weeks before it started feeling pretty decent. This type of injury also has probably the highest re-injury risk when you're doing jujitsu. Personally, for me, the acute feeling highly injured stage lasted about six weeks, and I wasn't able to behave normally in everyday life until after about that time. So now let's go over some of the things that I did that helped to smooth my recovery. The first thing I did was 
I used an ice pack off and on for about 48 hours. I also took ibuprofen for about a week. I made sure to sleep upright to prevent my rib from absorbing pressure while I was sleeping. And after the first 48 hours, I started to use a heating pad to get more blood flow to the area and theoretically improve my recovery rate. Something else that's really important is to make sure that you don't accumulate any congestion. The last thing that you want is to end up with bronchitis or something like that and have to do real deep coughs when you have a rib injury. Coughing and sneezing are both extremely uncomfortable when you have any kind of rib injury. So if you have allergies, you should probably consider taking allergy medicine for the duration of the acute phase of your rib injury. In terms of the sleeping upright part of things, if you are a stomach sleeper or a side sleeper like I am, it can take some getting used to. That took probably two or three weeks for me. If you have an adjustable bed, this is a little bit easier to pull off. At first, I gathered all of the pillows in my house and I built the saddest pillow fort you can imagine. Eventually, I ended up buying an adjustable bed and even almost a year after my rib injury, I do tend to feel better if I sleep with a little bit of an incline because it keeps pressure off that area. Nowadays, I can trust my rib to behave pretty normally, but even still, it's not exactly the same as it used to be. So if it's within your budget, I would consider maybe getting an adjustable bed. So assuming you've gotten past all of this acute injury stage and you're starting to feel normal, you're probably active and anxious to get moving and start training again. So let's break down when and how to return to training. I advise a ton of caution when you're returning to physical activity. Being cautious and choosy can really help to keep you from getting re-injured. Personally, I think you should wait until you feel completely better and then wait one more week before you start returning to strenuous physical activity. Now, if you haven't been walking during this period of time, I would start with walking. If you've been walking, then try jogging and biking. You can also start to lift light weights and do a little bit of progression to see how your body feels under load. These are far more controlled activities and they will give you a good sense of where your injury actually is in terms of recovery. I did the weightlifting thing at light weights maybe 50% of my one rep max for probably two weeks before I started to feel comfortable with the idea of anybody being loaded on my body in jujitsu. Then when I returned, I returned for drilling. Now returning for drilling is not really the same feeling as returning to live rolling. Live rolling is kind of what everybody wants to do, but it's also the place where the biggest risks for re-injury occur. I drilled for two whole weeks before I even considered doing any kind of live rolling. So now let's get into how to handle returning to rolling in jiu-jitsu. So after drilling for about two weeks, I started to integrate light rolling into my routine. Some of the things that I did to ease my transition back into rolling in jiu-jitsu are to Ask for lighter rolling intensity and make sure that I give that light intensity back to my training partners. The second thing that I did was I made sure to tap to any kind of pressure in my ribs. The third thing I did was I prefaced every single roll with, hey, I'm just returning from a rib injury. I definitely had to preface all of my rolls with this because my school had been covering body lock passing, which as you can imagine, put a lot of pressure on the ribs. In fact, I set up a mini game with my most frequent training partners where we would hand fight for the body lock grip. And then if they managed to get the grip, I would just let them pass so that we didn't have to go through the really high pressure transition for the body lock passing. Another thing that I did was I chose to roll with smaller training partners whenever possible. And if I couldn't get a smaller training partner, I would pick the very conscientious, bigger training partners in the room. During this period of time, I also emphasized playing a top game as much as possible. And I didn't do pressure top game 
This is when I started to work on a lot of things like float passes, as well as passes based on lateral movement. This phase of being very careful lasted maybe two months for me, and at times it felt frustrating that I couldn't go at full speed and that I had to modify so many of my techniques, but that's just what it is during this period of time. I didn't start feeling remotely close to 100% until about nine months after my rib injury. The sensitivity and how much you need to work around your rib injury tapers off pretty linearly over time, or at least it did for me, about two months after returning to rolling. But it's important to be honest with yourself and very careful to make sure that you're accurately assessing where your rib injury recovery is. And it will be incredibly impactful in making sure that your return to jujitsu sticks. I hope that this video gave you some perspective about rib injuries and how you might deal with one if you have one. If you're still feeling anxious about returning to jujitsu, my buddy Chase and I discussed this exact topic on a podcast that we did on this channel. So smash that like button and check out that video over here. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.